Okay, we are in the Midtown location, and what we have here is a, well, what was reported to be a bad shower pan. Um, this is actually a condo, the condo complex. There's units above us, I think three, or two other floors above us, and there's one below us. Um, so, in essence, uh, the, the person below had a water leak, which came from here, theoretically. A uh, plumber came out and basically said it was a bad shower pan. A lot of saturation. This is actually a condo, but it's wood construction. And so there's a lot of water saturation on his floor. Um, I'm going to try and get some of that later, um, but I don't want to really bother him. He's got a hole cut out down, down there, the plumber cut out. So the plywood is saturated with water. And uh, shower pans don't really tend to leak. This unit is three years old. Um, three years ago, it would have leaked if it's going to leak. Um, what happens is you have residual things going on. People come in another shower, you know, wet with no towel or no, um, nothing to walk on or whatever. So you have cracks in the tile and stuff and the water penetrates through there. So basically that's what we have is a lot of cracking and everything in the tile. It's a bad, bad tile job to start with. Um, but in essence it, it, it appears to be it's a bad shower pan because what else would it be if it's just intermittent? In other words, if it were the faucet, it would be continuous because we have supply there. Um, it, it could have been the drain, but I guess the plumber surmised that it wasn't the drain and it had to be the shower pan. However, having come in after the plumber and having done many of these tear outs, I can already tell you, and I will show you where a lot of the leakage is at. Uh, yeah, it's hard to believe this is only two years old. Uh, it never got sealed. This is builder's grade at the time, builder's grade tile. All this grout color should be about that color and had discolored a lot. In fact, I Without a doubt, there's going to be a lot, a lot of moisture here when I take up this shower pan. This pan is going to be saturated with water, which has nothing to do with the leak, you see, but it does have a lot to do with the mold and mildew. When these pans get soaked with water, they have nowhere to go and it causes all this mold and mildew. Um, but the bad, bad tile job, it's going to be really hard to see. Uh, there's a crack where it didn't get grouted quite enough on this curb. Um, this curb isn't sloped. Um, there's a slight slope on the outside, which is kind of bizarre. Um, there's a slight slope on the outside, but there's hardly any slope on the inside. I think these two tiles are sloped a little bit, but these are flat. In fact, this one actually goes inward. Anyway, uh, the cracks that, that go in here, you can kind of tell where the, the thin set or the, um, the grout was at, and the grout separates from the edge of the tile. There's another hole back here. And all they did, ever did here was grout, they never caulked. So what they, what you should do on a shower is even after it's been grouted, um, you should run a bead of caulking anywhere tile makes tile like this. In addition, we have a big crack, big in proportion to water. Um, I mean, it's not a huge crack, but it is big when you talk about water. Um, this crack along this grout line um, starts about here. Actually, yeah, about here, and it gets a little bigger and bigger and it goes all along to the back. There was some caulking that was done, it looks like, but it wasn't done very well, either which way. Um, most of the water penetration, I'm gonna guess, having not done the tear out yet, is probably gonna be in this little knee wall. So, what I anticipate is a lot of wood rot. They probably did sheetrock con construction. In other words, this tile is up against sheetrock, which that's gonna have some issues also. Um, and there's probably, without a doubt, no red guard or any type of waterproofing membrane back there. Um, so that's part of the problem. Uh, there's a little separation in this corner, as I said, where tile meets tile. Caulking should be done after the grouting. Um, they didn't do it, obviously, they didn't seal this tile once it was built. Um, and not the tile, rather, but the grout. So some of this would have been negated by the sealing, especially on this floor. Um, but where there's separation, uh, there's still going to be water penetration. So. That's going to be the issue. There's, there's not a lot of obvious cracks except in this corner. Um, and I'm not seeing anything that's yelling out at me right here. I know there's cracking going on, separation actually going on between this vertical and horizontal tile. So there'll probably be some curb damage. They probably just used um, two by four up under here, or two by six it looks like maybe. Um, so there's probably some curb damage and there's probably more than more than likely this wall is just rotted out um, although you don't know it looking at it 
And without a doubt whatsoever, this pan is probably saturated. So um, as far as bathroom renovations, I'm not doing anything here. Uh, the tile outside is fine. Uh, the tile on this uh, tub area is okay too. Uh, because it was done three years ago, I will never find the exact tile. In fact, they couldn't either. If you look at that tile and that bull nose, they're different. So we have a gray bull nose with a tan tile. Um, so it's a little mix matched here. And um, it'll probably get even more so over here. This is an all inclusive job where I'm paying for material. So I'm going to find not a cheap tile, but I'm going to get um, you know a pretty good quality low end ceramic, or not ceramic, but um, a porcelain tile, same as this is. Um, and if I can't, I might even do travertine because travertine is about about the dollar of sixty two dollar mark right now, and so it makes it very easy for just anybody to do travertine. So I might do the travertine, which will be a good little mix here with this type of tile, um, coloration wise anyway. Um, and this is day one. I anticipate probably five days uh, to tear this shower out and put it back. Uh, the shower door situation is a little different um, because of the angle that we have going on that they built here. Um, I'm not going to replicate that angle. In fact, when I take the curb and the knee wall out, I'm going to bump the knee wall out to this line right here, this tile, um, and just make it make it straight this way and then the curb straight that way. Um, it'll it'll get a little more room out of the shower, but it also I think it's kind of idiotic to have two panels next to the door. You have this longer one. And then the shorter one that's, that's on an angle it makes no sense to me. And the customer wants to try and salvage the old uh, panel and door, which is not going to happen if I go straight like this. And I am going to go straight. So what we're going to do is try and get the glass guy to well, save the door, obviously. And probably most likely save this panel and try and get him to get um, um, an extension, maybe use this panel. This panel over here is going to have to be changed out because by the time we bump this out another five or six inches we're not going to be able to use that. I rarely, in fact I've never reused shower doors. I think they were at about $800 for, um, for a frameless panel here and then a short panel and then a 28 inch door. Which $800 is a great price, that's all inclusive. Um, but they declined on that, they still want to try and use this so that's what we're going to try and do. Um, so we'll find out what happens and this is day one. I'm going to get started and uh, I'll be back. Okay, um, I have done the tear out on this for the most part and there are some oddities that I want to show you. This was not um, a bathroom that, or a shower that was built or rebuilt by somebody that was just a bad job. It was actually built three years ago by the builder. This is builder doing this stuff. Okay, so a lot of issues here. One, one is that they this is this is pretty funny for you Tylers out there. You'll you'll laugh at this. Um, they used dirt rock on the wall, um, which is okay, but they didn't waterproof it. Okay, and so no waterproofing. Well, okay, you can probably get by with that. But look here, what is that? That's mastic. They use mastic. Hello, mastic to put the tile on. In fact, this tile was so easy to take off. I think on this whole wall and this whole wall, I probably broke three pieces out of like you know almost 60 and the fact that I was able to save well I'm not saving them but the fact that I was able to not break that many pieces that's what mastic is you know it's just well this is crumbling um, uh, there's a piece in here that's still wet actually I don't know where it's at um, but it was on the curb <clears throat> the piece on the curb was also put down with mastic so the mastic three years later is still wet um, this is where all the Drainage was happening. Look at that wall. Look at that knee wall. How wet it is. All of it was going on the top of that. Actually, it's horrible. And then they put carpet. Look here. They put carpet padding on the subfloor, which is sopping wet, which ruined the wood rug um, subfloor. And then they put this membrane down on top of that. So this carpet padding got saturated, which saturated the wood below it, which caused a whole lot more damage. Why they would put carpet padding? Uh, down there, I don't know. That's bizarre. The shower pan was perforated right here. I didn't do that during the tear out. That was cut like that, wrapped around, and put up under there. Which, you know, there is a big gap right there, obviously. A big gap right there. And the nails in the side didn't help matters either. The nails in the side of the pan all along here. And then, of course, they did what seems to be 
very popular. They put the dirt rock inside the pan and you can see where it sopped up water and stained the shower pan. Normally a shower pan goes about four inches. This one is about six inches at least. So look here, almost to the top of this. This is like a whole foot of shower pan. And this is what happens uh, when they put the door rock inside the shower pan. The water just leaked up, leaked up, left all these stains. Which is a good thing that they put the shower pan that high because it didn't quite hit the top of this 12 or 13 inches. Um, so I guess they kind of fixed their own mistake before they even knew about it. But you know, look at this wetness, the moisture. This shower pan never leaked, although it was crappy put in. Um, the shower pan itself didn't leak, but the cuts that they put in it leaked. And then of course the tile itself, you know, where I showed you earlier, the grout lines and all that stuff, saturated this cur this uh, knee wall to the point where this wood, look here, this wood, I can just put my finger inside of it. I mean, that's horrible. This is three years old. This is only three years old. Look at that. I mean, this whole thing. And then plus, look how ragged he is. I mean, that's just, that's really, that's like a loose tooth. Um, but I'm gonna redo all this and um, a lot better than it was. God, anybody could do almost better than it was. I can't get over this carpet pad. This carpet pad below here is saturated with water. And look at that plywood. I gotta replace all that ply. That's ridiculous. Carpet pad. Wow. Okay. Oh, the curb. The curb is saturated too, by the way. And that's from all the nails, obviously. And then the crappy tile job that they did on top of it. So, I'm gonna replace the curb too. <clears throat> Weird thing is, they used reinforced concrete. They didn't use sand mix. Like, literally, it took me 20 or 30 minutes just to cut these two pieces in half and, and you know, really, really hard concrete instead of, instead of sand mix that normally is used. So, you know, they went overboard with that. They went overboard going up with the shower pan, although they didn't use the scabbing pieces. And then all the other stuff is crap. So, you know, it's like half good and half bad, which always ends up bad. Okay, I figured out why they put the carpet pad right here, because they were too lazy when they put the flange on the floor to cut out around the floor, make this flange a little below floor level. So they figured if they put this carpet pad here, that'll take up the difference. And so they glued it down to the bottom of the flange area. I'm assuming that's the reason. Hell, I don't know. But look at all that wetness. That's not what I did. Um, that's what they did. I don't know what this was all about. <clears throat> you know, if you live long enough, you'll see just about everything, I guess. Uh, just have no idea what the whole purpose was this. Uh, so pulling this all up off the floor. This is crazy. That's the way floors should look right there, dry. Curbs are usually damaged because the tiler doesn't do right. Doesn't do right, sorry about that. Um, but this floor is just, just, that's horrible. Well, I got my work cut out for me. Okay, this shower is done. This was, um, this was a five day job, actually, on, uh, I think it was five days from um, a Thursday to a Thursday without the weekend in, so that was seven days, but minus the weekend. Anyway, um, this is a finished job. If you recall last time, uh, the shower was a mess. Um, I did as much as I could on matching the tile. Um, obviously, I wasn't able to match this older tile very well. Um, this, as you saw before, has big grout lines, and which is totally unnecessary, and it's, it's just kind of a lower end, um, traver or not travertine, porcelain tile. And then of course the bull nose is gray and this tile is kind of a tan. Uh, so anyway, what I did is I saved um, most of the tile, well not most of it, but a lot of the tile that came off, which is really easy to come off if you recall, it really wasn't done that well. And I was able to save that tile for the new knee wall. This whole knee wall got tore out because it was rotted. And um, so the old tile is put back on this new knee wall, which is actually higher than it was before. I think it came down to about here. Um, so it's much higher. Um, matched up the bull nose best I could to match the tile that I used, and um, that's what we did on this side. Um, this other side, 
this is the field tile that I bought. This is also um, a porcelain, but it's a square home porcelain, so it doesn't have uh, the jagged edges that this one has, so it's straight. So in this case, I was able to use eighth inch spacing as opposed to this big quarter inch spacing. Uh, the eighth inch spacing worked out really well. Um, for the purposes of this wall being the main point of disaster, remember this floor was all rotted out. They had put carpet padding under here. Um, and so I think from about this drain back, this whole floor passed over to this tub area, actually got changed out. It was a good size, you know, probably four by three square area that the plywood I replaced and had to build back all that stuff. Um, but for the purposes of making sure that never ever happens again, even if I did the same job that they did, which was crappy, um, it's not going to happen again. I mean, that's three years ago. Plus, this is a different tile. Plus, um, I always slope my walls, so this has a slight slope to it so the water will fall off. Um, in addition to that, my line is a whole lot thinner than the old line used to be. In addition to that, I've sealed that grout. And so, well, the whole thing got sealed. In fact, the discoloration that you see on some of these lines is because I just got through putting the second coat on. This is one of the rare jobs where it was all inclusive. In other words, I've worked for the customer before a couple of years ago, building his shower. And so this is a rental complex or a rental uh, unit that he has. So uh, we agreed that the price would be inclusive of everything. All the materials, all the tile, everything. Um, would be included. Therefore, I'm responsible for both the ceiling and the caulking, which I've done, um, but I had to come back here a couple days later when all this stuff was dry. So because of that, um, I, I went on the medium side of um, this porcelain tile. It's really, really nice, easy to work with, and it does have uh, somewhat the matching bull nose. Not quite, but close enough. Um, in addition to that, uh, it has a matching two by two tile. And of course, that's, you know, sloped down to the drain all four sides, so we're not gonna have an issue anymore. Plus it was sealed twice, all the grout was sealed twice. And uh, I threw in a couple extras for this guy because I had him around for a couple of years and never got rid of him anywhere. This, this inset soap dish shampoo holder, I've had around for years and years, so I decided to put that in there instead of the old soap dish that used to be there which was just the cheesy version anyway of this. Um, and then a matching seat that I've had around. This was a lot bigger than it was. I think it came out to about here. So I cut it down on both the left and the right side, probably a good inch and a half, two inches in order that it doesn't take up uh, a big space. But this is great not only for sitting, but also for most women that want to shape their legs. It's only 12 inches up. So um, that makes it nice to put your foot up on, although we'll probably get shampoo and everything else sitting on it that has a slope also. And uh, we use the old fixture, because there's nothing wrong with it, although you remember it was real loose before. Um, so when I had this out, I tightened it. The whole thing is very solid now. Um, in addition, um, if, I, if you've noticed, I didn't want to buy a whole lot of bull nose to go around. So what I did is incorporated this two by two tile into this wall. I did it for two reasons. One, because the bull nose is expensive but also because when you have the bull nose here, then you have to somehow transition that bull nose to the new bull nose and they're different. And because they're different, I decided to separate the tub from the shower, in which case I just stopped with the tub tile and started again with the shower tile. So incorporating the two by two that's on the floor um, made it an easier transition rather than trying to do bull nose of a different size and a different color um, so that we end up with a straight line going across the ceiling. Of course, I took up the tile. I think it went up to about here before. In fact, it was right below the shower head, I believe. So I took it up past the shower head and it went up to the edge of the curb. And where in this case, I just took the tile all the way to the edge of the door frame, which made more sense. And it negated having that much more trim as well. Um, so basically this is done. Um, as I said, I've sealed it twice already. Um, there was a couple of issues here with uh, the grouting. I don't like, I don't particularly like grouting, but uh, not grouting, but um, caulking, I'm sorry. Uh, issues with the caulking. I don't like caulking a shower because once you've done that, you, you always have to recaulk again after it goes bad. You know, a couple of years from now, you gotta recaulk again. So one of the things I don't like to do is, is caulk down when you have smaller tile down on the floor here because it's really, really difficult to get this floor uh, caulking out of here when you have these little two by two tile, um, first of all. Second of all, there's really no purpose. When I set my floor tile, that goes first. 
my wall tile steps over it so the natural slope of the water is going to come up off of that and in addition I've sealed the grout there so we're not going to have any issues with water penetration going into the side because it's a vertical line instead of a horizontal and um, in addition to that um, the separation will be minuscule at best um, just by virtue of how I build uh, the pan and the, and the tile first and then set the tile on top of it. I did caulk um, the best I could on the corners usually because that's where you're going to have cracking. The cracking you're not going to see at the bottom here unless they set, um, unless they set the, the floor tile after they've done the wall tile which is evidenced somewhere else in the bathroom I'll show you but um, since I didn't do it that way I'm not concerned about cracking down here what I am concerned about is the separation between um, the two tile when they come together you have a non-porous surface which is here meeting a porous surface which is porous surface which is the edge of that tile that's usually where the cracking occurs in a shower even a very very thin line in that grout um, is enough to let water come through so I'm pretty adamant about even telling my customers after I leave to make sure they do caulking um, anywhere there's a corner where tile meets tile. So by virtue of that, I did a line down here which matches the soap dish. I couldn't find any gray caulking, although this isn't really gray, it's more of a bone. Um, so anyway, I did that line and I did this line right here. That's where I see separation and I usually see separation right there because again, porous and non-porous surface come together you're going to have a little bit of cracking going on and in addition to back here. So that's usually where I see cracking, if at all, on showers and that's why I did that. And plus that's a lot easier to take off later on than it is down here um, just because it's so busy with the different grout lines. So that's it. Uh, this bathroom, or this shower anyway, is functional. Um, the customer can use this shower anytime they want, um, although the glass guy will eventually put um, a, a door probably the door that was here before back and you remember this was kind of slanted over that way and I, I got rid of that slant so there'll be a panel instead of a slant panel actually there are two panels um, there was a slant and then there was a straight and then the door so in this case they're going to have a door here one panel and then the panel on the wall that'll go about three foot up or so um, and so that'll come later on but my part is done and um, this was a pleasure to do because you know I, Anytime somebody does a, a piss poor job at tiling, I always like it, you know, to be right. And, and of course, the smaller jobs like this are always nice because I can see the beginning and end really quick. Um, the separation I was telling you about on tile when they don't set tile right. Let me show you. In the back here, I don't have a lot of light. But you see, there's a huge crack right there. And the reason that happened, well, part of the reason that happens is they didn't seal it. See up the wall here too. This is why I caulk. Um, in the corners here because of that crack but there's a couple of reasons they they didn't um, set the floor tile first see they set the wall tile and then the floor tile so your porous edge is over here and your non-porous edge is over there um, in addition to that I know for a fact they didn't do any type of sealing um, so you always end up with this crack going along here um, it's just this is a mess but anyway uh, this wasn't the damage. Um, the floor and all this stuff is usually what I do on most of my bathroom. Tear up the whole floor, the tub, the toilet, all that stuff and redo all the tile. But in this case, um, I didn't do that and I think the match is, is relatively good. As I said, it's a rental unit so, um, you know, it's not something that somebody, it's not a master bath that somebody is going to just be in awe about. It's, it's a functional bathroom. Uh, but I'm out of here. I've got another job to run off to so um, I'll catch you on the next one.